and welcome back to another episode of To Whom It May Concern. I'm your host, Malak, here with my co-host, Inara, Khuela, Mariam, and Rifa. Hey, Assalamu alaikum. Hello. So it's going to be quite the episode today because all five modern skeptics are here. So that always makes things a little more exciting. So we decided today to discuss cancel culture. Which cancel culture by definition is when a person, typically a celebrity, shares a questionable or unpopular opinion or has had a questionable behavior that's perceived to be offensive and they're called out on social media and basically canceled. Which means they get a really bad reaction from fans and everybody kind of just drops them. Are they really canceled though? I feel like we've never actually canceled a celebrity. Like they'll be in the limelight for like four seconds for doing something bad and then they're back and better than ever. I think it depends on the individual. Like recently, SNL had hired Shane Gillis and people had said, oh no, he has some homophobic and racist language and they basically got him fired. So they canceled him out. And I feel like that's because he was early in his career. And then we can compare that to somebody like Michael Jackson who has died. Mm -hmm. And we know that he has some, you know, past accusations such as like, being a pedophile, sexual assault, until today we listen to his music and can't get rid of his legacy. Yeah, I think it also matters about the time frame of like when that problematic thing or action was done. Mm. Because like if they did it, I think like if they did it when they were like literally in middle school or something, like why are you canceling them now when they're like, we all are learning, we're all evolving and growing. Right. I feel like for the most part though, it's not happening when they're younger. It's like when they are aware, but they're still again trying to figure themselves out but then they'll say something either like racist or problematic and then they're just caught when they make it i know i just feel like recently we've been more you're not allowed to say this or do this we've become more sensitive to these issues the culture right now is a lot more sensitive as opposed to before so at that time when they did say that there was no issue nobody said anything people laughed it's not being more sensitive like i wouldn't characterize like that's such a negative connotation towards like what it is it's not that we're more sensitive no we're holding people accountable rather you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like we're for not actions that shouldn't be done or things that shouldn't be said but it's like we're removing the context of that time when we do like go back on their messages and like oh look this is what you said at 1994 you know when that was more acceptable yeah so then sh- so, since it was acceptable at that time should it be acceptable mm. now is that what you're saying? No, I don't think we should be acceptable now, but I don't think you have to look pe- at people's history and to like, highlight their mistakes. I think we oh, learn so, and so develop. What, what I mean is, should we be accepting of what they mm-hmm. did in the past because at that time it was okay? Not like if they were doing it again now. I think we should acknowledge that it's wrong, but to cancel somebody totally is, I don't like really agree with that. So it depends, or maybe it depends on what they did. Yeah, that's true too. I definitely do think that the severity of the action also comes into play because like you guys mentioned earlier there's a significant difference between somebody making a comment and then being accused of pedophilia you know what i'm Mm -hmm. saying like that there are some actions that should forever go on that we talk about and we mention and we should never approve of and then there are some things that like inara said you kind of acknowledge that it wasn't in the right but you don't hold it against them for the rest of their career and i think it's also important that celebrities themselves recognize the responsibility of being on a platform when you have a big following and i for me personally i don't even just think it's celebrities that are well known i also think it's celebrities like youtubers with a big following and whatever Mm -hmm. some people don't consider them celebrities they're kind of just influencers but i think that that people that are celebrities or people that do have large following should be held to higher accountability like if I was saying earlier. I think regardless of whether you your intention was to have a big following or not, once you hit a certain threshold, I think you should be held accountable. And I just, that's just, for me, that just should go without saying. Yeah. Like, and the thing is, it's like, what happens next? I think maybe that's where we've kind of failed, like, in our cancel culture, like, as a society. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, we've canceled them. Now what next? Like, yeah. there should be a process where it's, like, kind of, like, restorative justice, where they are, they do some trainings or, like, some things to get back. Yeah. Or rather, they said something racially wrong. Yeah. They should do a racial sensitivity training. I think people sometimes say things without realizing. You and think, because wait, they excessive? have so many, like, restorative training, yet yeah, they can acknowledge that they said something wrong. I I've made so a you mistake. Think I see what I did was wrong. But I think yeah. everybody sometimes says things that they don't 100% what? think about. And are you really, like, it's unfair to hold yourself accountable for every single yeah, word. Yeah, again, it can depend on the weight of, of the, 
and again, it depends on the weight of the issue. Like, I'm, I'm talking about something more serious. There was that whole case with, like, Kevin Hart. Like, he was gonna finally, like, host the Oscars. Yeah, but he had said some homophobic slurs, I guess, like, way in the beginning, premature years of his um, comedic career. And he had apologized for them. But the Oscars came up. Or some Wait, people, really? Like, yeah, mm -hmm. or some people made heard. a... Yeah, yeah, he did apologize. Oh. But some people made it, like, a bigger deal, I guess, now. And this is, like, years later. Mm -hmm. And then the Oscars was, like, demanding for him to apologize, like... Again. Again. And then he yeah. ended up just quitting the Oscars because he's like, I had already seen the wrong in my ways and I had already apologized. They're just excessive with their punishments, too. I just find it funny, specifically when it comes to comedians saying hurtful things because that's what their career is kind of based on mm -hmm. and it also like a lot of these celebrities or influencers they become famous off of doing stupid stuff so it's like what stupidity are we allowing versus what are where are we drawing the line i think there's a fine line though like you can do com comedy you can roast people you can you can do all those things it's just there's a certain line like don't if you're a white person don't say the n-word like i think it's like <laughs> it's very like straightforward if you're it's not straightforward it kind of is though and that, no it's not straightforward forward and it's evolving back then it was okay to make homophobic jokes now it's not so it's like yeah okay. there was that comedian dave Chappelle, yeah and he was actually saying um in one of his comedy shows on netflix by the way it's aired on netflix but he was saying how he had an instance where i guess he said he said a homophobic word gay he said something like that and he had gotten called into his producer's office i guess yeah and he they kind of told him like you cannot say that word like that's such a big word that's such a vulgar word like mm -hmm. you just can't say that and then he's like okay like i understood i couldn't say that whatever so i walked out and then he came back on the show and he's like well why don't you guys ever flinch when i say the n-word yep yeah like yeah. he's like i'm african-american yeah he's like i'm african-american Mm -hmm. And I understand, but the N-word still holds a negative connotation. It's like Koyla said, where do we draw the line and what is acceptable and what is it? And it's funny, another thing about comedians is because they're playing with such fine lines, I remember there was an instance where Pete Davidson was upset that someone was recording his show and people were like, oh, why is he getting so upset that we're recording his show? It's not a big deal. But he's like, no, it is a big deal because comedians come out and they have to test kind of their comedy uh -huh. on the crowd. But if they say something that might be too problematic, someone puts that puts it online, that's it, they're canceled. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I don't know why Bill Maher is even a thing. He said that thing a couple months ago about him being a house N-word, and then like daily he's like so problematic on Islam and like calling us terrorists every day on his show. So I don't know why he's still a thing. So he has not been canceled? No, he's... He's been publicly, like, shamed on social media and stuff, but, like, still, he has a show. He's still up and running. So then it mean I guess it depends also who's you're following. So if people support what That's he true. says, then they're he's still going to have a following that doesn't cancel him out, even if the other people around him are trying to. I feel like it's people of minority trying to convince the majority that what this comedian or what this actor, what the celebrity said is problematic and should therefore be canceled. For Islam, for example, how many people, how many celebrities just bash constantly on Islam or will say very problematic things? Or take on roles that are very problematic, yeah. Exactly, but nobody bats an eyelash. Mm -hmm. Nobody sees anything else as pl problematic. I think it goes back to what, what Khwaira was saying. It depends on your following. So I mean, what? let's look at Trump. Look at his following and the people that follow him, and he still isn't canceled out because... They're trying to impeach him, though. Well, <laughs> well, he can't really be canceled because he's a president. Well, we're trying but to impeach him. But in the first him. place... Like, even in his campaign, when he was running, he was saying so many problematic things, especially about Islam and the disabled community. Like, he was valiantly doing actions that were against Wait, but like you disabled can't people and making fun of them. And still he got voted in as president. No, even Kanye West, he's a supporter of Trump, and even though we know Trump has said, again, a lot of yeah, things I'm that are Yeah, I'm surprised over that, because like, he just had a show in Chicago. And, like... Oh yeah, I'm just so confused. Like people, because sometimes know. they don't like the person, but they appreciate the art. I think. So but like can they you separate they, the two. That's what I'm saying. I feel like people do separate the two. I don't like they'll say, "Oh, I don't like him as a person, but I love his music." They justify it by separating the two. Yeah. You can't though. Like in general, I think you can't. I mean, the same thing with like R. Kelly. He, everyone's like, "We're gonna stop listening to his music," but I still listen to Remix to Ignition. <laughs> See, I disagree with that. Oh I God. think we should. I think there are certain. <laughs> Yeah. I think there are certain things that people do that, no, we do need to boycott. I don't care how good uh -huh. your art is. You, yeah. We need to, like, remove you from... I agree. Exactly. And when people say that argument, <laughs> like, I agree with it. 
but for some reason, like, if the song comes on, I don't the change The thing it. is, but I'm saying if you're alone, I'm, like, <laughs> bopping to something. <laughs> but even then, like, he's singing, the thing that he's singing about is also, like, if you think about what he's done, and then, like, yeah. you listen to his song, that's it's just, true. like, oh honestly, it's just, like, how do you listen to that knowing what this guy has done? Like, yeah, I, that's true, that's true. So don't even listen to it when you're alone. I also think there's another important aspect to, like, cancel culture in general. Like, we've been speaking about celebrities this whole time. There's also, like, ones that I'd like to speak about, about how where people think it's okay to like cancel people in their community let's say we're in an organization and instead of like solving the fight in person they'll take it online and they'll cancel that person and they'll Mm. name them online and so that's when i think like it's very problematic and and i don't agree with cancel culture on that level at all so so use it for celebrities but not when it comes to like personal relationships i think in that case like you should be calling them in and not calling them out celebrities it's a whole different story because like like we said they have more responsibilities and they have more people to answer to okay i don't know i kind of agree with that in the sense that if you have a dispute with someone or like you're arguing whatever you shouldn't blast them on social media it's not necessary and honestly most of the time i think people are just doing that for attention but i do still think that there are individuals at a local level that should be held accountable and that's like sharon brannigan that palos township lady whatever oh, that Take has been talking about yeah wait no l- let me clarify sharon brannigan is a po- politician politicians aren't really in my so are people I mean, they are, but, like, Sharon Redding is total di- totally different. She's totally racist, and she's a politician that has to answer to, like, her constituent base. Yeah, but so I'm just saying different. she's more of on a local level. Like, a lot of times people just overlook what these people do because, it's like, whatever, like, what impact is she really making? You, you know, know what I'm saying? She has a lot of impact, but I'm saying in general with, like, community. When I was talking, I meant, like, community members, as in, like, we're in the same SJP on campus. Here's my thing. People, sometimes people will, in the community, will go and do cancel culture online because they're too lazy to do the actual work of actually solving the problem there was an actual case in our community where someone called out the masjid and i'm like okay fine you want to call them out online what's next like they didn't it it was just very lazy way of you know kind of solving the problem and i agree because at some point like we also don't take into consideration what an effect cancel culture kind of has Mm -hmm. because as soon as you voice that opinion or you voice that problem now you're opening it to like millions of people that also have an opinion i'm like i agree that is um detrimental honestly especially when they call them out online i'm like yeah you're right the ammos are online you're right they're all gonna read this and that's gonna fix the problem yeah like this is like you have to look you have to be you have to be strategic about what you're calling out and if it's gonna help you in the long run if it's not like if you actually want to solve the problem the ammos are online they're not gonna change what they have like let's be honest they're the ones in like yeah, in power yeah. in the masjid so how are you gonna fix that fine call them out online if you want to i don't think you should but go to the masjid and actually speak it voice it go with the group and yeah try to find change a solution it. yeah i agree i don't and I, like i said before for the most part i think people that do go to go online for that yeah. stuff are just trying to put like the message down blast or just trying to put somebody's flaws like they're just trying to make them a bigger deal than it is because they themselves um, maybe don't have a solution no i agree they are real problems that they're expressing but i, I just think, think that it should be maybe you should hold that off like social media that's a great like i think it's great for like activism stuff but you should use it to supplement or use it you know maybe as like a third card like yeah. that shouldn't be your first card that yeah. you ultimately re- like the yeah, first like thing you maybe, resort to and maybe build a campaign well, exactly. with your social like, media like you know what i'm something. saying it's bigger than that well some people say that th- that's that would be the first step to calling out or like if they to can't the problem? yeah if they can't do anything maybe they're not strong enough to no but if you're that means but, they haven't tried but if you're if the people you're targeting or the people that you want to make the change aren't even on the platforms you're exploiting then what's the purpose to get everyone else that's part of the community mm-hmm. that is online no well, i don't i, I think that's them. detrimental yeah i agree with it if at this point because celebrities it makes sense to call them out online because you will never you're, when, you're not what, gonna meet, you meet them in exactly person <laughs> to where you can voice your opinions to them but if you had a problem with your local community masjid i'm pretty sure you could just walk in there <laughs> literally find somebody and voice your concerns and like call and leave a voice message that will be heard maybe so you can ensure you're going to be heard in different ways than calling but them maybe out maybe they feel like they're not being heard which is why they're going to that's, this other and avenue. that's a great that's a great but have they tried how do you know they haven't tried? A lot of times people turn to social media because they know they can garner support from social Ex- media. Like, you'll always find at least one person that agrees with what you're saying. You know, so when you're feeling like you don't know what to do or people around you maybe in your close circle aren't mm-hmm. agreeing with you, you go to social media because you're like, I know someone's bound to think the same way I am. Plus, people on social media could take these things out of context and just hear your side. Yeah. And then will go up in arms, jump in the bandwagon to rally for your support without even knowing the true context of the situation. 
And my thing is it's they shouldn't use social media at all. That's not my thing. I'm saying like, wait, if, if they literally aren't cooperating, if they aren't, then you use it as a different mm-hmm. mechanism and method for the, to make them listen. Okay, so shifting the conversation, I know we originally started the topic with the responsibility that celebrities have. So to what extent do you guys think we should hold celebrities accountable? Like how far should they be allowed to go? And then how far should we reprimand them when they do something they're not supposed to? I understand how celebrities do have such a large following so we are we should i guess hold them accountable but i feel like celebrities shouldn't be that influential on our life but they are but it i don't know like i don't like how that is honestly i a hundred percent disagree with that statement it's even the simplest things that i find that they should be held accountable a hundred percent like i do think that you should be held to a higher standard and i know we're not supposed to idolize people and i don't think it's so much of that i just think it's like an unspoken thing once you have once you influence a certain amount of people or once you're are they really big, influencing though oh my god yes yes are you we literally at kardashians I don't even know any of them the kardashians for an example you see them every time you open up your snapchat every time you see them on instagram every time you open yahoo like those are the type of people that you may not even recognize yeah. it, but once they do things, it's such a, like, they start such a domino effect that, yeah, when you do something wrong, yeah, you're going to be treated even 10 times but harsher than someone we, else. But I think we forget that these individuals are human and they do make mistakes. So they do have a following, but at the same time, like, they are bound to make a mistake. And I feel like sometimes we're just so easy to call out people. Because all eyes are on them. Right. I think we should just start a trend where we don't care about celebrities. Yeah, Khaled, good luck with that. I know, seriously. <laughs> I mean, I, in general, I don't keep up with stories. Neither do I. Maybe I really that's why I don't them. care. Like, yeah. yeah, but you're thinking of it in in your own terms. Like, think about the general population. Because there's such general. a minimal, yeah, minuscule. Yeah, like, maybe you and I don't care about what they do, and it won't influence us. Even though, actually, we, we think it will influence us, but in reality, it probably does subconsciously. It influences us. Because like, what yeah. they're wearing, we like it subconsciously. We, we think it's our decision. But not no. if you're not looking at what they're <laughs> wearing. No, maybe it won't affect you <laughs> <It's> specifically. <laughs> like, you'll see the celebrity wearing it. Exactly. Then you think it's popular. But let's say everybody else will think it's popular. Then you will then think it's popular. Regardless of even if you knew where yeah, the like trend came do, from. Yeah, how yeah. do we come out with new clothes? How do we come out with new styles? Like, what's in, what's all not? Of it's all based on what people are doing. Exactly. And I, that's why I do agree that whatever they're human they make mistakes i get it i really do so like as long as they apologize after the yeah meeting, but they should the rec- they should recognize that i'm in a position of power and therefore my actions will result in a harsher consequence but sometimes so th- i feel like we filter what people like have to say even though they truly believe that like what is that extent where we're like where i could voice my opinion without being afraid of what people may say i think if you're not attacking a group like a race then you're fine. Like, I think that's more when you're talking about one person's actions or something. Like, you talk about Trump, for example. I don't think there's a problem with that. But when you say, when you're talking about a whole race, I think that's when it becomes problematic, mm-hmm. personally. Mm-hmm. Like, like, if you're just not attacking a group of people. Yeah. But a lot of celebrities are even being called out for not speaking out about certain issues. So it's not yeah. even like they're saying something and then being backlashed yeah. for it. They're not saying something but and still not, being backlashed for That's a different it. thing. That's not really cancel culture. No, but a lot of, like, for example, Taylor Swift, the, she, for a long time, was silent about, like, every issue. And yeah. then she spoke about, like, voting or women's rights in one I- instance. Yeah. And everyone was like, well, where were you before? Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. It's really confusing. But the thing is, Taylor Swift is an artist. Does she really have to speak about politics? Yes. Art, art is political. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Everything's political. But, okay. it's, like, her lo- like, songs are about, like, love songs, relationships. Does she have to talk about... The White House. Yeah, that's example. not her field. But you're, didn't you say they're human? As a human, you sh- that should be your responsibility. They're human. They have feelings. They have, so yeah, then that should be your responsibility. Speak on human issues because you're a human. And if you want us to treat you like a human, speak on human issues. No, I feel like it's because people think they have such a huge platform that when they do talk mm-hmm. about an issue, it will be heard by so many. And you don't have to... Nec- that it's, it's a vital tool. And you don't have to necessarily, use. I think, attack issues of politics. Like, you don't have to sit there and discuss, like, issues in the White House. But you should speak out about like the refugee crisis or like the way mexicans are being treated on the border you know like things like that that just affect you as a human being you should speak out about you don't necessarily have to attack democrat versus republican or anything like that i don't know i feel like they don't have to but for some like if they want to they could like so a lot of people with the nfl and the whole colin kaepernick they didn't want him to like take a knee because this is football let's not make it political like that and that argument annoyed me but like if they want to stay silent maybe they don't want to talk about it 
Because if they say something, then they will be called out on something else. It bothers me so much when someone says, stay in your lane. Don't t- You don't have enough knowledge about this issue to give your opinion on this issue or to care about this issue. Stay in your lane. Like, you're just an actor. Be an actor. You're just um, uh, a lawyer. Just be in your lawyer field. You're just a doctor. Stay in your doctor field. Like, don't have opinions mm-hmm. on anything else. It's like, no, we're all in this society if you have an yeah. opinion on well, something it goes or back don't to like that, it, then remember speak that Gillette commercial where they were teaching oh, it was men. About, yeah, teaching g- men how to be men, and a lot of people are like, "Who are you to tell men how to be when your field is like razors and shaving cream?" I don't think people should be just put into their little bubble and they can't expand out. If they want to do a commercial like that, they have every right to. They have every right to be political or to be involved in what's going mm-hmm. on in society. So here's my thing. I feel like that's the thing. We never know when we're going to call out people. People try to move, do something good and like teaching guys to be guys or like how to treat people nicely. People take offense to that. Or you don't say anything at all. People take offense to that. Like you will never make people happy. So I'm just going to go that's ahead. That's not true. No, I think there's a very, I think you have to walk a very fine line when you're a celebrity or when you're an influencer. No doubt. The job is harder than it looks. I'm pretty sure. But you have to be able to change with the times. I think that's what's but important then, about celebrities. But then and you're just changing people four about. people. You're not doing no, no. that. It's not. Look changing. at how you. Wh- how are you in high school? How was I in high school? Yeah, I said a lot of problematic things. Now I've changed and evolved because not because of the times, but because we've learned. You know. Yeah, I. But I think like you have to understand the type of environment that you're in. Also, like I could hold opinions my whole life, but sometimes it's appropriate to voice them, and sometimes you're gonna get a backlash if you do. You know what I'm saying? Like so, they can you have, have to be able to read. They can have these opinions they just shouldn't say it out loud then they should know what to say for the public and what to keep private yeah i do honestly think when you're in a celebrity or you're in a position of power you have to read the area you have to read your environment like th- that's the whole thing with but comedians then, yeah, saying but jokes but no no i think it holds when you say like comedians make certain jokes back in the 80s that they can't make now you know what i'm saying you read the people in front of you you read what's going on around you so then i just feel like then you're not being you you're just yeah, following wait what's trending no i don't think it's not being you but i think it's knowing when like i feel like to share. big like influencers or people who have made a huge difference in society were not having the popular opinion and that's what made them make such a big difference but if they were like just listening to what people were saying at the time they wouldn't have had a huge influence i think what i find problematic mostly about cancellation culture is when someone does something that genuinely isn't a problematic issue or isn't an ethical issue it was just like a decision that they made that the world just doesn't agree with for example i think the first thing that comes to mind is let's say if a hijabi influencer they started out their career being a tajba and then later on took it off people are like cancel her cancel culture and i understand why if you would want to stop following her for certain reasons but that decision isn't like ethically impactful Mm -hmm. yeah yeah like that's a personal decision but people look up to her okay i honestly i mean like i'm so torn about these topics because i understand where she's coming from and i understand that that's a personal decision but personally when i saw it i was really taken aback like i was not i didn't appreciate it at all and it's not because i'm (sighs) against her making her own life decisions or whatever it's just i do feel like you're influencing so many people like these things that you're doing are so monumental. Like, I don't know. No, I don't disagree with that. That's true. A lot of people could see her reach to that place, and I think the arguments that were made, like, a lot of younger Young. hijabis that look up to you that see, oh, we can reach this place too. Or if someone's being struggling. A hijabi, yeah, and then seeing you take it off, because so they can get the idea that you did that because of the fact that you became famous and now have this. Or like, you're trying to reach really an extra threshold platform. or something. Yeah, but in reality, she could just be struggling, but have to deal with that issue in such a public sphere. The thing is, is like, I understand how you, had, on a personal level, were taken aback by it. But the thing is, is like how you're saying before, you said you hold people who are famous celebrities who have a, who is a following to a higher standard. The thing is, it's like, I want, like, can you elaborate on what that standard is? Because what I'm thinking is, you're putting Dina Tokyo on a standard that a sheikh should be on. A sheikh has the intention of making Islamic decisions because purely because of his title, because he's a sheikh. But Dina her, Tokyo is not a sheikh, huh? so. But her vlog, like her, the whole image she was going off, was hijabi Muslim. Um, it was always vlogger. modest wear. 
modest wear. She's still modest wear. Yeah, but she was always about like that image, like that full hijab image. I just felt like they were bringing a more mainstream look on Islam. You know? But I felt like her whole image was always, oh, I'm hijabi, I'm Muslim, and look, I could she do what everybody else does. Image, yeah, though. she did. It, it's not playing off the image. That's what it was, and that's what. But I don't think. But I think that's what she was always pushing forward is hijabi, Muslim, like. Regardless if that was what she was promoted for or whatnot, my thing is people wanted to cancel her mm -hmm. because of a personal decision she made that wasn't necessarily ethically like affecting the yeah. world. Yeah, yeah. You know I what agree. I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So like this was a personal decision that she made. And unfortunately, let's say she was struggling with hijab because it was in front of so many people. But that does that affect people. Made. Taking off the hijab does affect younger individuals who are trying to find themselves. I'm not saying have the it does But hijab. canceling but might that be doesn't a mean stretch. You it's Islamically unethical. That. You can say that. It's Islamically unethical. Yeah, but to cancel a person because yeah. of that? No, I think canceling is a stretch just because she's more like, this is my struggle and this is how I'm going through it and this is what I'm doing. Versus like, she didn't actually do or say anything to affect or directly affect other people. Like she wasn't saying, take off your hijab. Yeah, or like hijab is oppressive. But she was just saying for me now... I don't feel like I need to wear the hijab. My thing is, if I guess you don't agree with what somebody does, you don't have to like call them out. You could just have your own choice of unfollowing. Okay, so let's play a little game of would you cancel? <laughs> <laughs> so everyone's gonna name a situation and we'll just all decide if we'd cancel them based on their actions or not. Okay, so a celebrity that plays a role in a movie that is not their culture or race. Depends. So like Jasmine from Aladdin, she's Indian, she played Arab. Would we cancel her? Or more of a white person. Playing a black role? Yeah. What? How? Cancel. Or an abled person playing a, a disabled role. I guess these are... No, I would not cancel. I wouldn't cancel either. Unless it's like the role itself is problematic. If their acting consists of having to put blackface for their... Yeah, that's wrong. Okay, no, like you Jasmine shouldn't do that. Jasmine from Aladdin being Arab. Would you cancel her? No. no. Just that's what I'm saying. saying. I would cancel Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> the whole movie needs to be canceled. But. All right. How about a celebrity or an influencer body shaming? Like calling someone fat? Along those lines, it doesn't have to necessarily yeah. be like that. That That's wrong. So would you cancel them? Cancel. 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 Not cancel. Okay, so next situation. Actors eating at a restaurant that support controversial would See, this is do my thing. I eat at that same restaurant. I really like how you put actors. You can't cancel them for just <laughs> eating there. But if they were to, like, also promote support. the same controversial So, like, views. they take a Snapchat of them eating there. Or, like, they Snapchat their food. That's that's clearly supporting, though. Like, no, like in, a lot of people don't even know what, what restaurant chains even support. support. Okay, so, like, someone... But, like, Chick-fil-A is obvious. Everyone talks yeah. about it all the time. Versus, like, when we looked up Buffalo Wild Wings, apparently supports Trump. Wendy's. We didn't Papa know that. Papa John's. <laughs> we didn't know that, but, okay, like... Okay, so, like, a celebrity posts a Snapchat of eating a Chick-fil-A sandwich. Do we cancel them or not? I personally wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. Okay, so thank you guys so much for tuning in for another episode of To Whom It May Concern. Please continue to subscribe, like, and follow us on social media. We appreciate all the support we've been receiving so far. If you don't already follow us, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at The Modern Skeps. Please continue to tune in every Tuesday morning listening to our new episodes. If you have any ideas you'd like us to discuss, please email us at modernskeptics at gmail.com. Sincerely, The Modern Skeptics. P.S. With great power comes great responsibility. Bye.